Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the greatest pulp writer of all time. That would be Robert E. Howard. I wanted to talk more about Robert E. Howard because he is one of my very favorite writers of all time. Uh, he is the greatest pulp writer who ever lived. There were other great writers who wrote in the pulps, but, you know, Chandler, Hammett, even Lovecraft, they were all, they were all a little bit more literary, in a way. Robert E. Howard was pure pulp, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Pulp is great if you do it right. He did it the best. Robert E. Howard was the greatest pulp writer who ever lived. And it is the Halloween season, so I want to talk to you about this book. This is The Horror Stories of Robert E. Howard. Now, Robert E. Howard is most, uh, most remembered for Conan the Barbarian, of course. His immortal character, Conan the Barbarian, who has been in the comic books, who's been in film... Uh, who was in a TV show for a while that was really bad. And I, I hear they're talking about doing another TV show. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I never get my hopes up for that sort of thing. But that is what he's most known for, is Conan. He also did other great pulp heroes like Cull and Solomon Cain and Bran MacMorn. Solomon Cain and Bran, Bran MacMorn... Uh, are in this volume uh, because some of their stories were pretty horrifying stories. But Robert E. Howard, his chief outlet, the magazine he wrote for the most, was Weird Tales, just like H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, that was the place where most of his fiction was sold and published. And he was very much influenced by H.P. Lovecraft. They were pen pals. Uh, they wrote letters. They wrote a lot of letters to each other. Uh, they had long, long debates about the merits of civilization versus the merits of barbarism and other things of that sort. And uh, they were, they actually became pretty good friends through their letters. But Robert E. Howard really, really liked H.P. Lovecraft's writing. He appreciated his writing more. Quite a bit. So a lot of the stories in this volume, no surprise here, have a Lovecraft feel to them, but with a very Robert E. Howard twist. Robert E. Howard, he was chiefly an adventure writer, and even his horror stories, they have, a lot of them have an adventure feel to them, whereas the horror stories of H.P. Lovecraft usually reduced his main characters to madness. Uh, Robert E. Howard's characters tend to just want to kick the monster's ass. That's pretty much the way his characters go. Uh, <laughs> they, they are very rarely reduced to anything close to madness. Uh, Robert E. Howard characters, they get stuff done. Uh, Robert E. Howard's characters do. They tend to be on the tougher side. A little bit less intellectual, but a lot more tough, Robert E. Howard's characters are, even in his horror stories. So this volume here, the horror stories of Robert E. Howard, this is one of the uh, Ballantine uh, editions of Robert E. Howard's work. Ballantine, uh, a few years ago, a little over 10 years ago, I guess, they started doing, uh, they started publishing Robert E. Howard's works in these big trade paperbacks fully illustrated trade paperbacks. Uh, they've got the best edition, I believe, of the Conan stories in three volumes. Uh, they've got all of his other heroes, Solomon Kane, Cull, Bran MacMorn, all of the fantasy and horror stuff. All, and also some of his ad adventure in historical fiction as well are published in these volumes. This one is just a collection of his horror stories. And they, like I said, they do include some of his other series characters, like Solomon Kane. like I said, had some horrific adventures. And they're in here. Uh, 
uh, as well as the character Bran MacMorn. Bran MacMorn was in a story called Worms of the Earth. And Worms of the Earth could be one of Robert E. Howard's best stories. It's definitely one of his best stories. But it might be his best story, Worms of the Earth. Worms of the Earth was a tremendous story. And it's a great horror story. Uh, so this volume is a lot of fun. And it's a, it's a great collection. It's a tremendous collection. Starts off with some of his earliest work. Uh, his first horror story uh, was a story uh, called In the Forest of Villa Fair. And that was a werewolf story. And one thing I should mention is that this is fully illustrated by Greg Staples, uh, who does a great job on his illustrations. Just look at that. That's the, the first story. Man, he does some great work in here. Um, stuff like that is just all throughout this volume. That's Solomon Cain himself right there. Uh, what story was that? Hills of the Dead. That's a great story, and it's a great image of Solomon Cain. This book is full of stuff like that. But his first story, uh, The Forest of Villa Fair, was a werewolf story, very short werewolf story. Uh, it has a sequel called Wolf's Head, Another great illustration there for Wolf's Head, which is a longer, more complex story. As these stories go on, then you have the Dream Snake. <laughs> the best thing about the Dream Snake, unfortunately, is this illustration. The Dream Snake is not Robert E. Howard's best story. Uh, you, you notice that his competence as a writer gets better and better throughout this volume. Uh, the early stuff in here tend are some of his earlier stories. Some of his earliest stories, in fact. And just like every other writer who's very young, he was in his early 20s when he was writing this stuff. Uh, he didn't live past 30, so all of his work uh, was done when he was in his 20s. But when he was in his early 20s, uh, you can kind of tell he was a new writer. He was good. His talent shone through all his work, even his, even his earlier stuff. But uh, you can tell it was early stuff. He got a lot better quickly. He got a lot better quickly. Uh, so s some of the stories in the in the front part of this volume, they're entertaining. But as far as the writing is go is concerned, it's not his best stuff. Although it has to be said, it's better than a lot of the stuff that Weird Tales published. It's only fair to say that. Uh, but then you get some other more competent stuff. Oh, the Shadow of the Beast. Look at that. That's just awesome. You know, Robert E. Howard had a thing about having big giant apes in his stories. Uh, maybe he saw King Kong too many times. I don't know. Uh, but certainly when you get to these, these Solomon Cain stories in this volume, particularly Hills of the Dead uh, was just a fantastic story. Hills of the Dead was kind of a story where Solomon Cain goes up against vampires in Africa. A whole city of them. But the vampires are kind of like zombies. They're undead. Uh, and, but it's a, very, it's a very different take on the undead in, dig, in, um, in that story, Hills of the Dead. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, and it has some otherwise some just decent horror stories. Uh, the Shadow of the Beast was, was pretty good. Dig Me No Grave was pretty good. Uh, it has his, probably one of his greatest horror stories, which is The Black Stone. Uh, this is very a very Lovecraftian story, although the horror in this is much stronger uh, graphically than anything you'll, you'll find in a Lovecraft story, probably. The Black Stone is a fantastic horror story. Just, it's really, really good. It's, it's one of those stories that's anthologized a lot, The Black Stone. What else is in this volume? Just a ton of great stuff. Um, stuff that you'll have a hard time finding in a lot of other volumes. Uh, but again, Worms of the Earth. Worms of the Earth takes place in ancient Rome. Uh, Bran MacMorn is the king of the Picts. He's the Pictish king. And he gets revenge uh, on a Roman uh, who had killed one of his subjects. And the, and the lengths that Bran MacMorn goes to, the dark, dark lengths that he goes to to get revenge. Worms of the Earth is just 
it's a great story, like I said. It could be his best story, and that's saying a lot. And it also has some really chilling moments in it, really creepy stuff. Uh, Robert E. Howard was not just influenced by H.P. Uh, Lovecraft as far as horror was concerned, but also Arthur Mackin. And you see a lot of Mackin in these stories. Great illustration from Worms of the Earth. Uh, which is also, as well as being a horror story, also could be could count as being a fantasy story as well. Most of his uh, stuff in Weird Tales, horror or not, could also be considered fantasy usually. Uh, then you've got uh, The Hoofed Thing, uh, another kind of Lovecraftian story. Um, Black Canaan. Black Canaan was a great story. Uh, there are... It, it should be said that there are some race, racist overtones in some of Robert E. Howard's stories because of when and where he grew up, which was in Texas in the 1920s. Uh, that's when he was working in the 1920s. And where he lived at the time was a very racist place. And so some of those attitudes do come through. But it should be said, well, in some of these stories, uh, you have characters that use the N-word a lot because they did back then. It should be said that his narrative, the narrative voice of those stories it doesn't give you that impression, but the characters in the stories certainly do. Unfortunately, uh, he was a man of his time and his place. So know that going in that there's some of that in here, unfortunately. A lot of that kind of thing in these old-timey pulp stories. And you do get some of that in this story, this horror story, which has a ridiculous title, but is a fantastic story. And the story's title is Pigeons from Hell. Yes, Pigeons from Hell. Kind of a ludicrous title, but it's a great story. It really is. And you got this great illustration heading it, and that is very fitting. Uh, for what you get in this story. There's a lot of creepy stuff going on in that story. Uh, and it has a very good sense of place. Uh, Robert E. Howard was great at just bringing you into the world that he was creating and just putting you there so that when you read these stories, a lot of the times you kind of feel like you're experiencing these stories. And that works really well in a horror story. Pigeons from Hell is particularly good. Uh, that's followed up by a few others. Uh, one worth mentioning is the fires of Ashurbanipal, which was an adventure story, but he turned it into a kind of Cthulhu mythos story. So it's an adventurous Cthulhu mythos story and a really good one. It has that great illustration there. And again, very fitting uh, to the material in the story. The illustrations in this book are pretty much perfect. They're pretty much spot on uh, for, for the spirit of the stories that it's illustrating. Great stuff. So while it is true that quality-wise this does kind of go up and down, this does have some of his lesser works in here. That is true, particularly at the beginning. All of the stories have a really pulpy feel um, because that's what they are. They're all pulp stories. I kind of feel like you want that in a Robert E. Howard story. But some of these stories really go beyond that. Um, stories like Black Canaan and Pigeons from Hell, certainly Worms of the Earth, uh, Hills of the Dead. Um, there's some stuff in here that is just, just magnificent. Some of his best work is in, in this volume. And so it's the perfect volume to pick up during the Halloween season, if you want to read some Robert E. Howard. And like I said, this guy, he wrote like nobody else, Robert E. Howard. Fantastic stuff. So there you go. Uh, the horror stories of Robert E. Howard. I hope I've talked some of you into trying to track it down. It's still available, this book. It was published a while ago, but copies are still easily available. You can just get on Amazon and get this guy. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you uh, back here at the Stately Vaughn Manor real soon. You guys have a great day.